That was hella fake. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> Welcome to episode five of Wave of the Union. It's your girl, Liz. And it's your girl, Stephanie. Let's get into it. The heartbreaking images and news of separated children from their parents being placed in metal enclosures and detention centers have been all over the news this week. This breaking news is the latest and arguably heaviest moral infraction presented by the Trump administration to date. After intense backlash, Trump signed an executive order to allow for families to stay together, but only during the legal proceedings of immigrant families. Trump has already stated he's expecting more helpful legislation. Now, Democratic Senator Dianne Feinstein has proposed the Keep Families Together Act. The bill currently has the support of every Democrat, but zero Republicans, none. The bill would help ensure the enforcement of Trump's executive order. It would totally ban family separation unless clear evidence was shown that a child is in direct danger being with the parent. Grab your phone, dial the number below, state your zip code when connected, and simply say, I live in blank and I support SB 3036. It's so, so mad. No, I know, you, you are a very passionate person. I feel you want that, but Especially with these children, it's super heartbreaking. That one um, video or picture where there was a young child crying and then there had to be an older child to help that child change their diaper. That's fucking ridiculous. Are you gonna sit here and tell me you're letting kids run around in cages and while you're treating them like animals, you're not even gonna have anybody to try and help them with their daily needs that normally their families would provide for them? That is ridiculous. All you fucking all lives matter people, I wanna see you do something about helping these kids. Cause y'all always wanna say all lives matter, all lives matter, or you anti-abortion people that want children coming into this world, then please go ahead and do something about these children in need. It, I, I've seen a lot of people even put like, oh, well, the Obama administration was doing the same thing. And I'm not saying that the Obama administration is right for what they're doing, what they've done in the past as well. It's not about who did what first and now, it's not about that. It's about what we are doing to human beings, to babies, to children, ripping families apart. You're not going through it, so you probably brush it off. Like people are brushing it off and then, oh, I don't know, it's just, it's so disgusting. It this week, Florida artist XXXTentacion was shot and killed in Deerfield Beach, Florida. As an artist, he displayed an array of versatility in his short career. Though he had his own controversies, the late artist was on a mission to promote positivity and growth for the local community and all his fans across the nation. If ever be a sacrifice, I want to make sure that my life made at least 5 million kids happy or they found some sort of answers or resolve in my life, regardless of the negative. He became very outspoken about gun violence, mental health, and general wellness. Multiple artists have spoken about X's positivity since his passing. Memorials have been held in cities such as LA and Chicago, while X's own charity event in South Florida on June 24th will serve as a moment to bring awareness to suicide prevention and to celebrate the life of X. As XXXTentacion says in an IG video to his fans, hopefully in his passing, he will be a martyr for positive change. We also wanted to say RIP to Jimmy Wapo, who died within hours of X's passing. I may not agree with things that he may have done or said in the past or even, you know, just upcoming to his death, but I definitely do want to say he was way too young. And from what Liz was saying, it seemed like he really did want to better himself and better the people around him and spread positivity. And he just had so much more growth. Blows my mind even a little bit more, just like almost every type of gun violence we've seen so far. It was so senseless. It, it, it really was. Regardless of how you feel, just pay your respects. And if you don't want to, just say nothing at all. Like, I don't understand why people still feel the need to say ugly things when you can keep your mouth shut. 
girl. Girl, today was leg day. Don't know how to act. <laughs> okay. On Thursday, Virgil Abloh finally debuted his first collection for the legendary French fashion house Louis Vuitton with all the homies in attendance. After being named the artistic director of Louis Vuitton, Abelot's collection debut included 56 Wizard of Oz themed looks. This turned out to be a collaboration with Warner Brothers to celebrate the film's 80th anniversary. Famous faces such as Kid Cudi, ASAP Nas, Playboy Cardi, and more were sent down a multicolored runway at the Jardin du Palais Royal. The event ended in an emotional moment which has been all over social media between friends who shared a long journey to the top. Virgil jogged to Kanye for a tearful embrace in celebration of a true we made it moment. Yeah! Mm. Recently, Carbon Engineering, a Bill Gates funded company, has announced a discovery that it can directly remove carbon dioxide from the air and cheaply. It was estimated in 2011 that it would cost $600 to remove a metric ton of CO2 from the atmosphere. The Carbon Engineering Group claims they can do it for as little as $94 and at most for $232. A prototype version of their CO2 processing machine is already running in Canada. The group plans to turn much of the CO2 into running gasoline for cars, jet fuel, and other common gas needs. If they can pull this off, the technology could potentially stabilize the entire planet, shift broad political discussions, and transform how humanity looks at climate change. Let's go, America! <laughs> and Canada. And Canada. Canada be with the shit. I mean, just like any place, they have their issues, but sometimes, I just want to be like, hey Canada, can you bring some of your love and compassion down here? I'm about to like here become a Canadian resident and just make right? peace out America. Too much shit going on over here. Cycle the CO2 and for it to help us and give us an advantage to power our cars, our jets, our gas tops to cook if you still use that, which like is- Like the gas range or whatever? Yeah, I'm with it because I'm, Pretty fucking tired of putting gas and crying as I see it go $10, $20, $25. It's like, you just like. Is the machine at it. broken? Uh, like, or is this, is this. Like, yeah, can't wait for that movement to start. Oh, oh yeah. Go science. Go fucking science. The biggest losers in a trade war, as predicted by Morgan Stanley, would be producers of footwear and consumer electronics. Car companies such as Ford and GM would also take huge hits. Trump has various reasons for beginning a trade war, often mentioning manufacturing jobs that have been taken by other countries like China. Now Trump blames the loss of manufacturing jobs on things like NAFTA. That sounds simple, but from about 1940 till now, manufacturing jobs have been declining as a share of the economy in the US. That time frame is just shy of 80 years, way longer than the 25 since NAFTA was first signed. It is becoming more likely that a trade war between the US and China is on the horizon. A study from earlier this year showed a potential net loss of 147,000 jobs if a legit trade war broke out. Both China and the US have stated they would enforce tariffs of up to $50 billion for round one, with the first move set to be made on July 6th by the US. There's no telling how it all shakes out. Just don't be surprised when it all goes down. So I had the great opportunity of sitting down and taking the time to talk to Bree Daddy. Hey, hey Bree! Hey girl. Damn, your voice really overpowers me. I know, mine. I'm sorry. Who we were able to see spinning at a brunch after dark event. Her set was super poppin'. I was able to ask her some questions and get to know her a little bit more. So let's check it out. <laughs> yeah, my bad. We can't give we can't give the promo. <laughs> I mean, my sponsorship. <laughs> All right, so first off, where did the name Bree Daddy come from? I'm sure that's a common question for you. Well, in high school, which was only four years ago, <laughs> um, I used to be called Pimp Daddy. That was literally on my, like, drive, like, you know, the beginning of your card tag, tag thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it said Pimp. So we used to have make make jokes in my group, so they would just call me Pimp, and then my friend was like, yeah, okay, Pimp Daddy, and I was like, 
I like that. So like it kind of stuck through high school. You ran and with it. When I like, yeah, I literally ran with it. So <laughs> literally ran literally. with it. <laughs> like we even moved down here and was like, yeah, yep. Yeah. And my friend was like, you should just call yourself Brie Daddy. And I was like, that does sound better. And I just went from there. Cause I don't go by DJ Brie Daddy. I just go by Brie Daddy because I'm not just a DJ. So I do multiple things anyway. So I kind of just turned Brie Daddy into a brand. And I like how it's kind of um, controversial because like men be like, I don't want to call you Brie Daddy. I'm like, oh, wait, are we allowed to cuss? Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> you know, they Please. 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 <laughs> but yeah, I don't give a fuck like what men think. Yeah. Like, so I was just like, I don't give a fuck. Like, nigga, you be saying trick daddy. Like, so that sounds way worse than calling a female that trick half the daddy, time. You yeah. gonna call another man daddy? So, what's the difference? So, True. I just, I just went from there. I like Brie Daddy. It's staying. Okay, so like you said, you're not just a DJ. You're also into coding, right? Computer yes. science. So, how yeah. did you get into that? Like those two fields they're so, pretty it's so funny <laughs> because i know y'all remember myspace <laughs> oh yeah yeah so we was all low-key coders so i was like i definitely picked up on html mm -hmm. because i used to make little templates and have my make my friends little templates with html so when MySpace went kind of went down, I was kind of sad because I I was into that. You still like really enjoyed the yeah, process. Yeah, I enjoyed the process of some, making something on my own and using it. So in high school, when I was thinking about okay, what am I going to do for college? My dad was like, you should do computer science because it's a growing field and you know you'll never not have a job in that field. And you know you might enjoy coding because you kind of did it when you was younger. That was the best decision I made. Like I, I'm proud that I went to college. Honestly, I used to be like, I don't want to go, but I'm glad that I did. No, oh, that's awesome. Where'd you graduate from? St. Thomas University. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's in oh, um, okay. Miami Garden. Okay, yeah. that's awesome. So would you ever plan on like somehow spreading the knowledge that you have? And if so, how? Yes, yeah, so I'm at, I am <laughs> so funny. So I have a website called breedaddy.net and I want you to go on there. It's yeah. real cool, by Thank the way. you. I, I just it. added a mailing list because no one knew, but I will be an author next month. I wrote a book. It's called Think Outside a Box, How to Turn Your Passion too. into Profit. So Amazing. that is a good way. Like that's a great way for people to actually get to know me. The first introduction is talking about how, how I got to this point, you know, how I had to humble myself, what happened to me, why I moved from Delaware to Florida, you know, what, what mistakes I made and then how I recovered from them. People don't even know. I was like, I was scammed for $7,000 at 20 years old and people don't know, but I literally like, that's when I started becoming more of a hustler doing this DJ and doing the web development. You know, even though, even though I was in school doing work study, like I was making moves to pay off that money. Thank you to Brie. You were my first interview here being at Waves of the Union and you so so much so much um, maturity and wisdom and I really love that that just radiates from you because you really are an awesome person and I hope that we get to see you more here at Wave of the Union. Peace. Peace and love, baby. I've been super boring. All right, that's it. That's it. You didn't catch it. That's it. We're done. We're done. Okay. 1201. Go science!